Hi, I'm Laura Staples with Red Desert Violin, and I'm here today for virtual sheet music, and I want to talk to you about the Pachelbel Canon, the most beloved tune for weddings and for weddings. <laughs> it's a very popular wedding piece, but you know, I've played it probably 800 times, maybe a thousand. I'm still not tired of it. I love this piece. But besides being a beautiful piece, it has a lot of benefits to learning it. So if you have not yet played it 800 times, I want to give you a few ideas of how you can exploit this tune to help your violin playing. First and foremost, this is a great piece to improve your reading because most of us kind of have the melody in our ears and so your ear can help guide your sight reading so that's number one but number two it uses so many different note values it's got quarter notes eighth notes sixteenth notes uh... thirty second notes and rests and it's just very valuable for learning how to do better at reading rhythms so first thing I would recommend to you if you want to improve your sight reading and your understanding of rhythms I would print this out and I would just do some homework I would with a pencil I would draw a line down your music for every eighth note what this forces you to do is something called subdivision normally we just count quarter notes as our beat. You can pretty much count on that. But the canon is one piece that's an exception. It is quite slow, and if we counted the quarter note as our beat, it would go one, two, three, and that's just, that's so slow, it's not even really a beat. So we subdivide to the next smaller level, and that's eighth notes. So the beginning kind of feels like half notes. Two, one, two, one, two, one. See how you kind of feel two beats in each of those. Those are just quarter notes. So really we naturally want to feel the eighth note as a beat. So take your sheet music and write what's called hash marks or just little vertical lines to help you count the eighth notes. This is just simple mathematics. So in the beginning when you have quarter notes, each one of those quarter notes is going to have two lines by it. And then when you get to bar seven, for instance, well that's easy because they're eighth notes. So each eighth note would have a line through it. When you get to bar eleven, then every other sixteenth note is going to have a line through it, right? Because two sixteenth notes fit inside of one eighth note. All right, so I hope you understand what I'm describing. This is a powerful lesson. I remember when I someone first suggested that I do this, my rhythm was outstanding after I did this. I did it on the unaccompanied uh, Bach G minor adagio violin piece, and that's full of even 128th notes. So that was a real exercise in rhythm, and if you can find that piece, that would be an advanced challenge for you. Start with the canon. Later, you've got, like in bar 19, you've got, ooh, a 16th note followed by two 32nd notes. You've got to know how these notes add up rhythmically. So one eighth note is worth two sixteenth notes. So you see your, your first sixteenth note is right there at the beginning of the bar. Where's the other sixteenth note? We need one more sixteenth note. The two thirty-second notes put together. That's your other sixteenth note. Okay, so the first sixteenth note plus the two thirty-second notes, that those three notes combined give you your eighth note. Okay, so that would get one vertical mark. All right, I challenge you to do this. It will completely strengthen your 
understanding of rhythm and subdivision. All right. Uh, the second major value of the Paco Bell Canon is it, it gives you some simple opportunities to go into third position. There are some places where you have to go into third position. Um, in bar 15, that is where I would recommend that you shift. Don't wait till you have to get up to third position. Be proactive. So I, the downbeat of 15, and that's just a shift you have to practice. From second finger, it's an octave, F sharp to F sharp. And then I shift back down on the C sharp in bar 17. That's just me. Um, but that is the fingering that I recommend, and that's a nice little third position exercise for you. There's two other places where you have to go into third position. You have to go in 34, but I shift ahead of time in bar 33. So bar 33 has, you can start with an open A. So that open A gives you plenty of time to shift. One, 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 one. And this is bar 34. There's your C sharp. And then I dive right down. It's an octave shift. C sharp to C sharp. The final place where you have to go into third position starts in bar 49. And actually, that is where I shift. Again, it's just a one octave shift, the same one you learned in bar 15. F sharp to F sharp, two to three. And then C natural. I'd stay there. That's where I shift. Some people will disagree with me because shifting after a fast 16th note is a little risky, but I like to live dangerously. So I shift down in bar 51. I go. Shift down on that lower F sharp. Okay, so it's a really good, beautiful application for when you're just starting out learning third position. So there's some food for thought for you on this very well-loved piece that I think I could play it a hundred thousand times and still not be tired of it. I hope that you will take the eighth note subdivision challenge. Thanks for watching and uh, post your questions below. I will answer them personally. See you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.